The Unshackled Waves, episode 175. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company, and boy is our world spinning at a million miles an hour. Sky News had Patriot activist Blair Cottrell on one of their programs Sunday night, and hours later it capitulated to the online outrage it experienced, with an internal meltdown has been happening there all week. Alex Jones' Infowars was deplatformed by Facebook, YouTube, Apple, and Spotify for spreading so-called fake news and uh, perpetrating hate speech, setting up another debate about private corporations and free speech. The Emma Hussein our scandal is now over after the allegations kept rolling out and she has announced she's not recontesting her seat of Lindsay at the next election. First up, I'm going to analyse Blair Cottrell on Sky and the aftermath. Then our editor at large, Steel Archer, will discuss the ramifications of Infowars deplatforming. And then we'll bring in Jack Reedy from Pop and Lock to discuss Emma Hussar, who is his local member. Okay, so where to start? Uh, Blair Cottrell, he appeared on Sky News on the Adam Giles Show at 6pm on Sunday night. Now, Adam Giles is the former uh, Chief Minister of the Northern Territory. Uh, much was made of the fact that he was the, the first head of, head of government in Australia to have Indigenous ancestry, but uh, in government, Adam Giles had no time for identity politics or uh, victimhood culture. He was very much a, a cultural uh, conservative. He uh, worked... Uh, post his uh, minister chief ministership uh, for Gina Reinhardt before uh, his show started uh, earlier in May on Sky News. Now, uh, th this is how uh, Giles introduced uh, Cottrell. Now, my next guest has been described by his supporters as an idealist, a patriot, someone who is standing for the culture of the national identity of what it used to be. Others would call him a thug, public enemy number one, enabling him a neo-Nazi. Now, during the interview, Cottrell was articulate, measured, and reasonable in his responses. Uh, for example, when he was asked about uh, what his view on immigration should be, he said it should be uh, based on people who are skilled and who are culturally compatible with Australia. This is his answer. A, skilled migrants. Immigrants who can prove they've got some form of qualification, prove their work history, etc. B, Immigrants who are not too culturally dissimilar from us, but even if you want to draw the line at A and say just skilled workers, working migrants, in South Africa right now, South Africa, in that parliament, those parliamentarians, those ministers are currently drawing up in their constitution means for killing and stealing the property from white workers and farmers in that country. And these, there's millions of them. There's well over a million skilled workers and farmers, white South Africans, desperate to get out of that country. Now, we could, right now, stop immigration from every other country in the world and only allow it from South Africa. Now, the reaction from the Sky audience in the, the comments on social media uh, was uh, receptive, but uh, I checked in Twitter for, for something else at about 9 o'clock that night, and I saw that Nazis uh, was trending on Twitter, and there was mass uh, outrage that how dare uh, Sky News have a neo-Nazi Hitler lover on their, on their program, and at uh, about 9.44 that night, the Sky News director, uh, Greg Burns, tweeted it. It was a mistake uh, to have Cottrell on, and he deleted all links to the interview. Uh, many Sky personalities, such as uh, Janine Perrett, uh, Laura Jays, uh, David Spears, Caroline Marcus, uh, they all condemned Sky for having uh, him on, including uh, Andrew Bolt. And uh, Craig Emerson, a former uh, Labor Gillard government minister, he, he'd been a contributor on Sky for a number of years. Uh, he uh, resigned that. Well, it was only a minor role that he had, so most people saw that as an act of uh, virtue signalling. Now, Monday afternoon, uh, the CEO of Australian News Channel, which operates uh, Sky News on behalf of News Corp Australia, Angelos uh, Franigalopoulos, uh, announced that uh, Blair Cottrell was banned from ever appearing on the network again, and the Adam Giles show would be put on hiatus while there's uh, an internal review of their, their editorial standards. Now, the reason why uh, Blair Cottrell is labelled a Nazi Hitler lover is because uh, there's a Facebook comment from a number of years ago 
where he called for a portrait of uh, Hitler in uh, every classroom. Now, he had previously uh, denied the, the Hitler comments on Twitter. Uh, as you will recall, if you follow The Unshackled, I interviewed uh, Blair back in, I think it was uh, er early June. Now, I didn't ask him uh, about those comments because he already denied them on Hitler, so I didn't think that was worth, it was worth wasting uh, precious uh, interview uh, time uh, dwelling on that, but rather I challenged him with other on-the-record tweets, uh, such as why is there so much emphasis in his uh, tweets and posts about uh, white people? Why does he focus on on them so much rather than just Australian patriotism, nationalism in, in general? Now, later that Monday night, uh, Cottrell responded on, on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, he said that the interview afterwards was uh, well received by the Sky producers and he also uh, cleared up the, the Hitler comments for the first time on video. We'll just have a look at that. Now initially the interview was received well by Sky's viewer base as well as Sky's producers themselves. All of them seemed genuinely happy with it. They even suggested I could become a regular contributor. But the essence of all of this slander against me is that I am a neo-Nazi. But how did they come to that conclusion? Is it because I'm blonde and I love my country? Oh, that's right. The Hitler's Book in Schools Facebook comment. You do realise that the same fake account that made that post is still active right now and is still making phony posts, which the media attributes to me. Despite this imposter getting reported hundreds of times for years, Facebook still hasn't deleted this page. And the account still makes posts and attributes them to me, has a few thousand followers too who may actually think it's me. That is seriously their proof that I am secretly a neo-Nazi. Now, later that evening, he appeared on XYZ Live. Uh, XYZ.net.au is a friend of ours uh, with their YouTuber, Matty Rose, and editor, David Hiscock, where they had general discussion about uh, multiculturalism and immigration and what the, the past 24 hours had been like for Blair. Now, the good thing about uh, us and XYZ is that we, we can't uh, sack ourselves. Uh, now, the, the next day, uh, Cottrell was banned from, from Twitter for tweeting that he may as well have raped uh, Sky News presenter Laura Jays uh, on the air. Uh, she was probably the present daytime presenter who condemned him the strongest. She uh, tweeted calling him an asshole, and this is what she said, said on him on her Monday uh, program. Adds nothing positive at all to our national debate. He calls himself the leader of a racist right wing fascist group called the United Patriots Front. He's not a leader or a patriot, he's a bully. He's a fascist, a self-confessed Nazi. He's a misogynist that boasted about using violence and terror to intimidate women. He represents the worst of Australia. He's a fringe dweller and he should never, ever be legitimised. Now, obviously, that's not a, a wise thing to say uh, from Blair. It just feeds into this uh, perception that people have of him that is a, a dangerous uh, individual. And now, overall, it's... Sky News, they've, because of the way they capitulated to, to the left, and it would have been, they, they would have been scared that, oh no, Labour politicians aren't going to appear on our channel. Oh no, like Daniel Andrews, Bill Shorten, I uh, have uh, never going to appear again. God, oh, help, God help us. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed that I'll never get the honour of <laughs> interviewing either of them. Uh, but because they basically capitulated to the left, they've, they've lost support from all quarters now because an apology is never good enough from the left. And Sky News had been, to, to use a, a term, becoming more and more edgy uh, as uh, as it progressed. I mean, uh, it's called Sky News After Dark. Uh, it's It has its conservative primetime lineup with uh, Peter Credlin, Andrew Bolt, uh, Paul Murray, uh, Chris Kenny. So, yeah, uh, they were feeling a, a market in the, the, the media that because basically all of the mainstream media is is, fr is from the left, but basically now Sky have now, have now said, oh, there's a limit to, to, to what we'll push. And so uh, a lot of people on the right, conservatives, are feeling let down by 
by Sky News and they've just been apologetic all week. They've they've pretended the, the interview didn't happen. They've um, got uh, segments of the interview taken down from Cottrell's uh, Facebook and Twitter for, for copyright infringement. Let's see if they'll uh, take down the bits that I've used here. And uh, now, uh, in the past 24 hours, the Victorian government, uh, their transport minister, uh, Jacinta Allen, has announced that uh, Sky is a banned uh, uh, from being shown at uh, metro train stations uh, in Melbourne. Uh, and Sky News is apparently very upset with this. They deem it to be political uh, censorship, even though pff, anyone can just watch Sky News on their phone, uh, basically. They're saying, well, we're the only networks that uh, banned Blair Cottrell. Uh, Oh, Seven News, which had him on earlier this year to talk about African crime, and uh, Hack Live uh, a couple of years back uh, had him on for a uh, episode on Aussie Patriots. So this guy's saying, oh, he should be banned from them as well. It's because we have conservative commentators. So they're basically backpedaling at a million miles an hour. So where to from here now? The, the mainstream media has uh, clearly blacklisted all patriot activists, they'll only have them on if it's to call them uh, a fascist or a Nazi on air. Uh, you remember that after uh, uh, Blair Cottrell confronted uh, Dandy Man in Federation Square, the guy wearing the, the pink jumpsuit, he appeared on uh, Neil Mitchell's uh, morning program. But because Neil Mitchell was uh, hostile towards him and didn't approve of uh, what, uh, what he did, then Neil Mitchell was able to, to get away with that. So uh, it, it's clear that the only time that the mainstream media is allowed to give patriot activists airtime is to condemn them as horrible people. And another example of that is when uh, Neil Erickson was uh, interviewed after confronting Dastiari uh, at the Footscray uh, pub. It was all the uh, all the questions to him were, were all uh, ne uh, negative, like, oh, what, how could you call him a monkey? You're, you're such a uh, terrible person. So uh, it's clear what the, the rules are for, for the mainstream media. And that basically uh, leaves uh, the Unshackled and, and XYZ as the only uh, media outlets who are willing to uh, learn a bit more about these people because obviously uh, we all know that they've had uh, th a controversial uh, past there they engage in controversial activity but we always want to know a bit more about them and have more uh, deep uh, discussions here so we'll continue to, to do that at, at the unshackled I myself when I saw the interview on Sunday night I thought it was quite a uh, measured and, and deep a uh, discussion I didn't predict this would happen. I thought it was a possibility, so uh, I'm not surprised. So that's the week for you. And now we'll bring in the Unshackled's editor at large, Steel Archer, to discuss Infowars deplatforming. Steel, welcome back to the show. It's been a while. Oh, it has been, and I'm, I'm really excited to be back because this is a this is a fascinating but terrifying topic, and, and I can't wait to get into it. Yes, well, everyone who's gets their news online should have come across uh, Alex Jones and Infowars. Uh, Alex Jones has been, well, he's been a radio host since the 1990s, but became uh, notorious for his uh, belief in well, almost every conspiracy theory uh, that 9-11 was an inside job, that uh, the Sandy Hook uh, massacre was was fake, and uh, he was also uh, a big seller of uh, water filters, supplements, and uh, survival gear, and of course his epic uh, rants were entertaining uh, to, to most people, but he did have a, quite a loyal uh, following of what he called uh, Info uh, Warriors, and he'd become quite influential, especially since he supported Donald Trump for the presidency. Alex Jones has, has been a man who's on a mission. I'm not sure entirely what that mission is, whether it's a mission to take down the New World Order or to oppose a courtocracy or just what he generally sees as uh, you know, wrong with the world, but he's certainly made a mark. He certainly said a lot of things, and sometimes those things have flown through to, uh, you know, to impacting on what seem to be predictions. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, those uh, those have have come true. Sometimes not. He said a lot of he said a lot of different things. So it's been fun to follow some of the conspiracies. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a it's been a it's been a it's been a, it's been a, a long journey. But the the, uh, the scary thing is that just for advocating some of these, and he's, he's done a lot, like he's done a lot of work, 
um, he's now being thrown off these p- platforms into a digital gulag. This is terrifying that these pa- that these these private companies essentially that are uh, intertwined with government uh, on every level um, have now can now ab- abandon people to a digital gulag. Yeah, this is terrifying. Yes, so uh, InfoWars content uh, was deleted from Facebook, YouTube, uh, Spotify, and Apple for uh, hate speech and uh, fake news. Now, the Alex Jones YouTube channel had 2.4 million subscribers. It nearly went down uh, back in March because it got three uh, community standard strikes. Uh, and Facebook, they cited hate speech against uh, transgenders, uh, Muslims, and immigrants. Uh, and a, a lot of people thought, ah, oh, Info Wars, it's too big. They're, they're not going to really uh, uh, delete them. But all these four platforms in the space of 24 hours just pulled the plug on Info Wars. This is, this is, a, this is a, a conspiracy within a conspiracy because I, I, I'm pretty sure if anybody's ever seen anything to do with Alex Jones, he's... He hasn't exactly been an advocate of the Islamic faith at all. <laughs> like I'll, I'll say, it's been going on a little while that he's he is not been advocating for the Islamic faith. Uh, so you know, so why is that suddenly a new issue? Well, it's it's a new issue because of this new uh, social justice warrior drive to uh, delete every argument. In here and here in Australia, we've just had Stefan and, and Lauren doing the rounds here in Australia and then going over to New Zealand. And something that Stefan brought up was the fact he always went out to the protesters and he said, do you want to have a debate? Do you want to have a chat? And they said, no, we don't want to have a debate. We don't want to have a chat. We're just going to yell racist dog or racist or use these or these, these uh, communist sort of stop words. So they couldn't have a debate, would limit any any uh, degree of having a debate. Now, it was sort of it was sort of interesting because that street activist one word shut down of all debate and all reason and all logic has flowed through and flowed up the chains to corporate pressure. Um, corporate pressure, whether it be economic pressure or government pressure, or you know the fact that 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 uh, the, the Trump last week tweeted that the uh, the mainstream media is the enemy of the people and they're attacking that. They're coming for us as well. I mean, they'll, they will come for us. They'll, they already went for Ezra, Ezra Levant. Um, I don't think you, I, you know, this is this is terrifying on a, on a, on a macro sort of sense, uh, but it is, it is an inculcation of this street warrior justice stuff that you see uh, that Stefan and Malinke and, uh, and Lauren Southern have been, have been looking and uh, you know documenting so well around here in Australia, but it has been going on for a long time, especially in the United States, especially the Trump election. Now, the the only major social media platform which didn't uh, delete Infowars was Twitter, and that's where Alex Jones has been posting a lot of his videos saying, I warned you about the, the great internet censorship, guys. This is uh, coming to reality now. And even though Apple, they, I should have said, they, they took down his podcast, but the Infowars app is still uh, available. And of course, Infowars.com is still up where they're uh, streaming their, their, their content to. And now the, the the mainstream media, they're of course happy about this, well, because it takes down a competitor for them and because they consider Alex Jones uh, dangerous, that he inspires uh, domestic terrorism. Because of course, uh, well, even though it wasn't his conspiracy, he did mention it, that the Pizzagate uh, conspiracy, which uh, ended up with, with somebody shooting up the, the comic uh, ping pong restaurant where the... Uh, alleged uh, uh, child uh, sexual abuse rituals were, were, were going on. So he, uh, he, the, the mainstream media made out he was this really dangerous person and it, it's, his speech is just uh, too dangerous to be heard. Well, that's certainly what CNN thought. Yeah, well, you know, CNN is the enemy of the people. We all know that. But no, this is this is a very interesting turn because you mentioned before about the products, okay? You mentioned he sold, he sold water filters and he sells... Uh, stimulus, uh, supplement type uh, type materials and things like that. Well, the reason he does that, the reason he sells those products, is because he's trying to diversify his fin- his financial uh, his financial 
reach. I mean, he was an advocate of Bitcoin, but what I think his first uh, advocation of Bitcoin was back in 2013, something like that, after he interviewed Max Kaiser. He's been trying to diversify his financial reach for a long time because his, his argument is I can say what I like. I can have my free speech. And he pushes he pushes the boundaries of free speech for a reason, to show the people, to be the vanguard, to be the tip of the spear, to show people how insidious that these courtocracies are and how 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 much they will attack. But as as you mentioned, uh, Twitter hasn't banned him. It's not a it's not a it's not a fully organized attack in that way because there's there's sometimes there's discrepancy about which platforms allow what people. So for example, I was just reading the Twitter. Uh, CEO, and he said, well, Alex Jones hasn't violated any of our, quote, hate speech law or terms of service, whereas Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest and and that other one, LinkedIn, which he didn't even sign up for because he's his boss, <laughs> he's never he's never need to apply for a job um, in that way, uh, that, that banned him, right? So, you know, you have these arbitrary, subjective free speech monitors who are running around uh, doing strike policies on what you can say and what you can't say, and yet, and yet, some platforms say yes, some platforms say no. For example, Twitter says has has he's still running on Twitter. So this whole products, you know, thing that you mentioned, that's a way of getting ground support outside of these platforms, so that you know he can continue on and show you how how far the system will push and how they're coming after everything. Because I think it was Norm Chomsky, and I, I don't, I don't you know, re recommend uh, uh, talking about Norm Chomsky all the time, but he said it's very easy to define a, uh, it's very easy to control a society when they argue very definitively within a small band of free speech. So if you limit people's free speech, then and you let them fight very vigorously within that free speech, then it's very easy to control a society. It's Orwellian and it's terrifying, and it's something that must be pushed back against. Now, uh, this info was deplatforming. It's uh, it's opened up a free speech uh, debate. Well, uh, it's the, the reason why this is a uh, debatable free speech issue is because uh, all these uh, social media tech giants, they're all private companies. And so uh, th the libertarian argument is they can deny service to uh, anyone they want. But uh, a lot of people are saying, well, these platforms, given that they are so big, they, they have a moral responsibility to uphold the values of the West, which is uh, free speech. And of course, hate speech, <laughs> what is uh, hate speech? I mean, and this is something that Ben Shapiro, who's uh, no fan of uh, Alex Jones, said that, you know, I don't call uh, transgender people by their uh, preferred pronouns. Am I going to be uh, kicked off uh, for hate speech? And let's not forget the, the unshackled. We've done plenty of commentary on uh, Muslims and immigration. If they can take down info wars, <laughs> then they can certainly take down us. So, yeah, so I, so I totally agree. So as a libertarian-esque type person, uh, the 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 whole the whole idea that these private companies have um, have the ability to uh, shut down free speech in such a manner is totally absurd because these are monopolies. They're not little companies. They're not private esque type social media platforms that don't have any influence. These guys define what happens in the social circle, what happens in the public square. Um, they are a monopoly. There's no ifs or buts about it. You can't survive off these platforms if you get attacked. Milo Yiannopoulos went off Twitter. He's still on almost every other platform, and he and he shriveled up and died. You know, are they going to attack Donald Trump if they get rid of his Twitter? That's what. That's one thing. He can't. Then he can't directly communicate with the people. Um, no, there isn't. There isn't an argument about these are these are private companies. These are. Uh, you know, these are, these have they're they're allowed to have their own subjective hate speech uh, laws and and regulations. This is this is a total falsehood um, because they've monopolized the internet. Um, you know, so so no, the, the argument just is false. It doesn't exist. 
A lot of people are saying that in the wake of this, because let's remember, uh, Facebook, they've been under pressure to crack down on so-called fake news. And and, uh, let's not forget, uh, if you say something just on your personal page, which is deemed hate speech, you get, as the expression goes, zucked for uh, three days, seven days, or even uh, 30 days. A lot of people are wondering whether we should migrate to free speech alternatives. I know at the Unshackled, we've tried to diversify our social media presence. Obviously, Minds.com was created uh, with the goal of free speech in mind, same as Gab.ii. There's also uh, BitChute and PewTube for video, Um, but it seems to be very difficult to get people off Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, even though we know that they have these problems. We just all keep still going back to them because that's where everyone else is and so there's not unless there's any mass move which as we know in a society is difficult to do or we're between a rock and a hard place well it's all about the herd isn't it it's all about the content they hoard all the they hoard all the great content um until you can move the normal normal content off of the off of these off of these platforms onto these other pages where it's important it's informative and fun for people to actually be on these other platforms you're not going to get anyone if it keeps being esoteric small subjects or politics or niche uh, ideas that move off these platforms and people go there then you're only going to find the people who enjoy these other things um, and not the, the mass of humanity and that's that's the real argument of course, you know, it's, it's like Bitcoin or it's like, you know, like, like yeah, we, we've tried with YouTube, we've tried with all these different ones. And um, you, you end up with the same, the same group of people every time. You end up with a very niche group of people who are looking for the same things. It doesn't mean over time, it's like a, like a, like a tap, right? That right now there's a trickle of water, um, and, but eventually the floodgates will open up. Um, I've been subject to, to, to a 30-day ban for simply being an admin of a page that I wasn't uh, that I wasn't uh, even even posting on, for example. Uh, so you, you know, other people, normal, very normal people who, who hardly use the platform, uh, fall ill of these all the time. Uh, you know, they fall ill of random attacks from leftists or right or right people who just report them and duck them for no reason. Um, so the normal people, you know, they, they, you know, as as their freedoms and liberties get slowly eroded, um, you know, you'll you'll start to see a, a greater a greater movement, a greater you know, of, of normal people who are, and companies and businesses who are trying to protect um, their services. Um, right now, the the most under threat services and, and uh, businesses are obviously. Anything that is news related or opinion related, uh, it's to do with global affairs or politics because you're touching some very sensitive areas. Um, and they use these transgender and these sexual and all these other things as a, as a sort of a lever to attack. But um, when, when a company will get zucked or get a ban or t- t- taken down and they sell a product like I don't know, they sell some sort of product, you know, apples or something, it, with generic products. Um, when those guys get hit and affected, they'll they'll search for new things. If a movie company, you know, like Walt Disney got attacked for some reason because Star Wars de- depicts violence or something and they move over, um, you know, th- that's when you'll start to see uh, the mass migration of the very normal uh, internet users who are who are just there to have ent- to be entertained and have fun, but that's that's also a little demeaning to the internet users because not every not every internet user is someone who's just come on there to watch, um, you know, uh, some of these big YouTubers have fun all the time. Some people do want to see news, and what news is uh, is happen- What's happening on the news front is they're deeming the only correct speech, the only free speech to be the mainstream media outlets, be it CNBC, CNN, Fox News or whatever. Although if you are conservative, they are attacking you. Fox News as we speak is under attack. The Blaze is under attack. Res- Les Levant's being uh, uh, eliminated from YouTube as well. He, he, you know, the, the, um, the Rebel is under attack as well. So any alternative media, that's, they're out of the picture, obviously. Um, uh, so, but they're deeming that these that these 
platforms are deeming the only acceptable speech is this mainstream corridor. And uh, that might be, uh, let it be known that that might be why Trump tweeted the uh, mainstream media is the enemy of the people. Well, uh, uh, the good thing about Alex Jones and InfoWars, they, they are basically too big to, to fail. Alex Jones will still find some way to broadcast, and there's enough of his followers there to uh, find him and broadcast it to, to the rest of the, the world. Remember that if the, the Unshackled ever gets uh, deplatformed, make sure you're signed up to our email list so we can uh, find you right away. I know a lot of people follow us on uh, Facebook and YouTube, so just make sure that we have a way of, of reaching you. But thanks still for uh, discussing this issue with me. We'll certainly keep an eye on oh, wh what else these tech companies are going to do. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, like you say, we have to, you have, you subscribe to us, come to us, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deliver a good service to you. But uh, we're, we're, we will also be subject to attack. We, we go outside of these defined parameters. We're not within these defined parameters. So. Come over to the Unshackled, click like, subscribe, share, and, and make sure you visit the actual website so that you know where else we're going in this internet space so that you don't have to just find us on Facebook or just find us on Twitter or some of these. Come over to the whole website, the main website, and and have a look at what we're doing because we rely on you to, to, to visit our infrastructure. We rely on it uh, because the whole free speech mechanism is under attack. and. It's up to us, not just you and me, Tim. It's up to us, the whole unshackled audience, to uh, to fight back. And uh, apologies for Steele's uh, audio. Even though we've got good internet here at the Unshackled Studios, unfortunately, the rest of the nation is not the same. NBN, NBN. Got to fix that NBN. All right. Thanks very much, Tim. And now it's time to speak to Jack Reedy from Pop and Lock for the Western Sydney perspective on Emma Hussar. Jack, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. Glad to be on. Now, the reason I wanted you on to discuss uh, this Emma Hussar scandal is because she's actually your local MP, so I, I thought it'd be good to get a, a perspective perspective on the ground in, in Western Sydney. So obviously you voted in the, the 2016 federal election in, in Lindsay, which was between Emma Hussar and the, the previous uh, member, Liberal Fiona Scott, who is known as the, the sex appeal candidate after what Tony Abbott said about her in, in 2013. So what do you recall about that election and what was said about Emma Hussar at the time? Yeah, I, I, I recall uh, people being very shocked that, uh, well, not maybe not very shocked, but uh, su surprised that Emma Hussar won and she, she came out of nowhere. She didn't have a sort of long political career other than a, a little bit of the usual, just um, had some involvement in um, young labor as a, as a younger person. But um, the in terms of Fiona Scott losing that election, it, it People, she blamed the Tony Abbott sex appeal comment, funnily enough, but I, I think it's actually that people out here remembered, um, I think it was the 2010 election, Fiona Scott had a, a scandal uh, that involved Jackie Kelly, who was actually the previous uh, Liberal uh, MP for, um, the previous uh, Liberal MP for Lindsay. Um, anyway, and Fiona Scott in 2010 had had a scandal where she'd, um, uh, distributed uh, with the help of Jackie Kelly, the previous MP, had distributed um, a whole bunch of flyers um, that uh, it was about the Labor Party. Uh, if the Labor Party won, they were going to. It was claiming that if the Labor Party won, they were going to uh, propose a whole bunch of um, Islamic development in the area, and there was all these all this Labor support for Islamifying the area, and it was uh, it turned out to be completely made up. It was a massive Liberal Party um, <laughs> uh, spin. So. Uh, yeah, so I, I think her, her Emma Hussar's win had much more to do with Fiona Scott being bad and, and people remembering people remembering all the scandals and, and the fact that even a previous MP, Jackie Kelly, had been involved made it even more sketchy and so people just weren't going to go back to the Liberal Party after that. Yeah, given that it's a super marginal seat, it's, it's not surprising that the, the campaigns get quite dirty. Uh, now, most people wouldn't have known who Emma Hussar is for the, for the past two years. She would have just been a no-name backbencher, but they, they knew who she was last month when the initial allegations of uh, bullying her staff, uh, misuse of oh, getting staff to do domestic duties, 
and also uh, misusing uh, Labor Party funds. And it was revealed that she'd gone through 22 staff in just uh, two years and that there was an internal Labor in in investigation by lawyer John Joseph Wheeler. Now, uh, you wrote the, the initial story uh, about it, which uh, there, there were some pretty shocking things that she did. Yeah, um, the yeah, I, I remember my 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 headline was um, about the uh, particular incident. I'm trying to remember what it was. Yes, the uh, got a male staff member to oh, yeah. do the dishes. The, yeah, it was the a male staff member was made to do the dishes to to learn about his male privilege. Yes, and um, yeah, like and th there's the there's the um that in, that now infamous photo of the person uh, walking the dog that's uh, picking up the dog poop. Um, supposedly this was happening at all hours of the day. She was, she was getting staff to, um, uh, essentially babysit her kids. There was, yeah, there was a, a bunch of allegations that just made her look very shocking in, in the way that she treated her staff. But I mean, any, even, even if it had been 10 staff through four positions in two years, it's pretty shocking. I mean, 20 staff in two years in any place, it, it, it <laughs> Ignoring for the fact that it's ignoring the fact that sh that it, th these are taxpayer funded positions. I mean, e even in a, pri a small business, if if there's a small business in your local area that goes through that many staff, you should be concerned that there's something shonky going on there. Now, she was initially defended by senior Labor people such as uh, Leader Bill Shorten and Anthony Albanese, saying she was a hard-working uh, local member, single mother of three, and much of the, the defence and uh, even Husa uh, played this card herself, that she was a domestic violence uh, survivor, which somehow was supposed to excuse her mistreating others. Yeah, um, and Bill Shorten even, uh, I just... I just brought up the the dog. Uh, Bill Shorten even went so far as uh, it, it was a he, he was in an interview. I think it was in the Australian that I read this. Um, he was doing a press conference on it, um, and he was asked he, he was asked about its comment on Emma Hussar, and he basically said, "Oh, look, I, I shouldn't comment at this point, but you should know that uh, the the dog is a disability dog for a son who has autism." And it's like, well, okay, Bill, so what? <laughs> Now, it seemed that those uh, inside Labor who saw the, the writing on the wall for Emma Hussar, they were waiting after the Super Saturday by-elections were over, which Labor did well in to mm. undergo the political uh, assassination. First, there was a, a volunteer, uh, Peter Gray, who worked on a failed state campaign for Penrith in 2015. He said he had to spend time in a psychiatric ward due to the level of, abu of abuse uh, he endured. And let's remember, he was... Uh, just a volunteer. And then there was a leak to the Daily Telegraph that Emma Hussar, along with her friend, the Chief Inspector of the Penrith Police Station, uh, Tracy Stone, uh, they attended a Bruno Mars concert when she had no scheduled meetings in Brisbane until the next day, but uh, she still stayed in a taxpayer funded hotel room which Tracy Stone stayed in as well, and it was $114 spent on the com car. Oh, look, I I, yeah, I think you and I, as libertarians, all agree on this. There's no, um, there's no uh, sympathy for people who waste taxpayer funds. I mean, the, the the thing, the only thing that could really be said in her defense was um, that uh, it, it she she, <laughs> at least it, it was made to look as if this was a somewhat legitimate trip. Although, if you follow the paper trail, obviously the um, I, I think it is. Uh, it has been established at this point that she had uh, booked those afterwards, after the tickets were bought. Is that the case? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, and all politicians do this. They, uh, If yeah, they want to travel somewhere, they schedule a whole bunch of uh, political meetings around it so they can claim, look, I was there for uh, political purposes, even though my true motive was because I wanted to see my friend who lives in another city. Yeah, uh, as, as sad as it is to uh, do this uh, very low standard whataboutism, um, I would say at least it's not like the Sarah Hansen Young's daughter going on that uh, whale watching trip where the taxpayer funds were actually used for the, the uh, entertainment <laughs> for the MPs itself. Or Lucy Kachui uh, flying her relatives down from Darwin for her belated 50th birthday party. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I forgot about that one. 
Now, uh, later uh, last week, uh, BuzzFeed, their political uh, reporter, Alice Workman, she had been doing a lot of good work uh, on this story, but some people were thinking she went too far with uh, publishing uh, an excerpt from the investigation, uh, the internal labour investigation, which uh, said that uh, uh, while she was in the company of uh, uh, Labor frontbencher Jason Clare, she uh, performed the, the famous leg crossing basic instinct move uh, performed by uh, Sharon Stone. And apparently Clare was in the, the company of his three-year-old son. Now, both Hussar and Clare denied that this happened. I mean, if they, they both deny it happened, then it probably didn't. We, and most people thought that, yeah, this is probably... Well, the, the, the people inside Labor, they're going in for the, the brutal kill and, and taking her down in the most sensational way ever. Yeah, um, I, I, I as, as reluctant as I am to defend people from BuzzFeed, I, I do agree with you. I think Alice Workman's actually done a, a pretty decent job on this. Um, I, I've seen it thrown, the allegation thrown around that BuzzFeed has denied Emma Hassar natural justice for this, but uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> does, does anyone believe for even a second that if there was a right wing politician who this had happened to, we would even be having the same conversation? Like, th would anybody even be allowed to float the idea in the mainstream media that, oh, no, the, the, the media and the journalists said they had a responsibility to keep this under wraps and keep this within the Labor Party? Because I, I'm just I'm on Alice Workman's uh, Twitter now and she's she's recently tweeted a quote saying, um, question will you uh re be releasing the results of the emma hussar report and it's the answer is bill short and that will be a matter for the new south wales labor party so we you know we all know how this would have turned out had Buzz buzzfeed not reported so uh, as yeah as i said as reluctant as i am to praise people from buzzfeed i think they've done a good job here but um uh, as for that particular thing the leg crossing thing i would probably say that this that particular document which was i, I believe that was leaked in a a follow-up information leak by BuzzFeed, not in the initial reporting. Is that right? Yeah, that was uh, subsequent to it. Uh, BuzzFeed yeah, yeah. was one of the, the, the first to, to break the, the bullying allegations, but yeah, this yeah. Came, came, uh, came later. Mm, yeah, well, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see that... G given that it's, it, it's not even a one, one word against another type situation, it, it's, it's literally just both of them say that it didn't happen. Uh, it's hard to imagine where that, it, it seems like nothing more than maybe rumours that Whelan had dug up from, you know, all sorts of rumours happen in a workplace, I guess. Now, who saw she blamed a particular former staffer named him in Twitter and in uh, Fairfax Media as well, Jeremy Anderson and his father. She called him a disgruntled ex-staffer who was dismissed for poor performance and was teaming up with her uh, factional enemies to uh, destroy her. And she said she'd retain the services of Sandy Dawson QC for uh, defamation uh, action. So she she hasn't even said, oh, you know, there were times when, you know, I lost my temper, I probably didn't, you know, treat people. She She's just said, oh, it's, it's, it's all a conspiracy against me. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see how this plays out over the long term, because I, I feel like uh, many of the staff will find ways to back up their claims. Um, obviously, at this point, it's all a bit of a in in-house party politic type thing. But um I, no, I, I do. I, I would be. I'd be very interested to see if they do, especially if they do, um, uh, like ongoing performance evaluations, which most workplaces do these days. I mean, if that if that person that she's claiming has orchestrated this entire conspiracy uh, was let go for poor performance, I mean, it, it may be the case that he has performance reviews that he can bring up that n not wouldn't even have to say that that he's a, a great employee, but would just have to, that would just be able to completely dispel with that argument that she's making or that defense that she's making. And there was yet another story this week, another former staffer, Angela H Hachidi. Uh, she said working for Hussar was, uh, she was insensitive and brutal. And uh, what was really strange is that uh, uh, Hachidi, her 20 year old daughter disappeared and was found living with Hussar. Now this was apparently because the, the daughter had recently come out as gay and uh, the mother, uh, she had a hard time accepting it. And so 
Husa claimed that uh, she went to live with her because she was a, a homophobe and yeah, it's just really got messy it seems. Yeah, that is that is rather messy, isn't it? I don't <laughs> I don't know I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, um, and so last night, uh, Emma Husa, she oh, she saw the political uh, writing on the on the wall and announced that she would not be recontesting Lindsay. She wanted everything to stop, and she turned on the the, the waterworks there, saying, you know, well, she, she spoke about the the, the leg crossing allegations, saying like, yeah, well, because <laughs> yeah, uh, doing it in front of her like a three year old boy is yeah it's pretty that's... pretty vile and yeah like i said like she she said oh you know it was a robust workplace but you know i'm not the the, the monster that uh, uh you think i am yeah i uh, look there's not much there's not much else i can say that's not already been said it's it's not like i ever it's, it's not like i haven't met her or, or or know her personally um but yeah i i really have nothing else to say on her I mean, the fact that she has 22 ex-staff, that is damning enough for her to exit politics. Yes, all the allegations may turn out not yeah, to be true, and there's and she said, uh, there's certainly people who are wanting the political problems that she's caused uh, uh, pu uh, pushed out. Uh, but yeah, uh, there, there's no denying that her turnover of staff is unusually high, and it's it's obvious that uh, she you know was 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 a bully and uh, couldn't couldn't work with with people and so uh, she's paid the the political price. Interestingly, she thanked Bill Shorten for uh, his uh, support and so the coalition is wanting to uh, have some sort of parliamentary inquiry into Emma Hussar's behaviour and see if they can kind of kill Bill, which seems to be <laughs> impossible. He's Teflon bill at the moment and we still don't know whether we'll get to see this internal labor report anyway yeah i'm, I'm hoping that the pr this pr uh, public pressure uh i guess we can blame on buzzfeed uh orchestrated by buzzfeed um will have some effect i i am and yeah i'm very interested to see how this plays out in terms of affecting uh bill shorten and uh also anthony albanese who've both as far as i can tell come to her complete defense i mean i don't think they've really conceded anything they've they've basically just said oh it's a, it's a matter for new south wales labor but she's an amazing woman kind of thing well jack uh, i've enjoyed discussing this topic with you uh, it seems to be the the end of it now uh, uh make sure all of our uh, listeners check out the the pop and lock uh, blog or more preferably uh check it out when it's republished on the unshackled <laughs> of course thanks tim thanks for having me Good to be here. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. The next big public event in Melbourne is the March for Men on Saturday the 25th of August at 1pm at Federation Square. It is designed to bring attention to men's issues and say that it is okay to be masculine. It is being organised by local social media personality Sydney Watson. The Campaign Against Racism and Fascism and the National Union of Students Women Department are already organising a counter-protest. We'll be there to cover the event from both sides. The next international guest coming to Australia is former UKIP leader and Brexit champion Nigel Farage this September, visiting all the major cities as well as Auckland. The campaign against racism and fascism clearly, with not much else to do, have got a planned protest there as well. Tickets and various VIP passes can be booked by going to nigellive.com.au. The Unshackled, I'm pleased to confirm, will be at Liberty Fest 2018 in Brisbane. It will be held on the 27th to 28th of uh, September. Uh, guest speakers that are lined up are Daisy Cousins, uh, Warren Mundine, uh, Senators James Patterson and Amanda Stoker, as well as uh, former Labor leader Mark Latham. Tickets can be bought for the conference and the various evening events by going to libertyfest.org.au. Also, please remember, we can't do all of this without your support, so please consider becoming a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled. Also, uh, please consider sending us a one-off contribution via PayPal, and I've noticed that many of you have been doing that lately, so thank you for that. It all goes uh, a long way, so you can go to our PayPal Me link, which is at uh, paypal.me slash The Unshackled. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at 
www.theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.